So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and in this video, I'm gonna be doing a little project to help my sister out. She's got this shelf unit that she wanted to have wheels on it because she's got the hardwood floors. However, she didn't want it to look like it had wheels on it. So I made this platform that the shelf unit just sits on top of, but it's got a nice trim around the outside edge so you can't really see the wheels, but it's still easy to roll around the house, and I did make it so she can lock the wheels if she needs to to keep it stationary. And the cool part about this project is it's very universal. You can make it to fit pretty much anything. So let's get to it. So I measured the piece of furniture that my sister wanted these rollers to go underneath and I added about a quarter inch to the length and width of the outside diameter of it. So on all my projects, I pretty much screw and glue everything. So I countersunk the piece of plywood to anchor this one by two. So I did leave the corners open because I wanted my casters to be as far to the outside edges as possible. So it's as stable as possible. All right, so we're laying a layer of glue on this. Make sure my wheels still do a full 360 here. So I used a piece of plywood that I had laying around to do this project. It was a little warped. I figured by the time I anchored these two one by twos, the full length of the plywood, it would take that warp completely out of the plywood. It did come close, but there was still a little bit left, and I had to use the outer trim to help hold the rest of the warp and make it perfectly straight. So on most of the screws, I did not pre-drill into the 1x2. I did test it to see if it was splitting out on a scrap piece. However, on the edges, I did pre-drill because that is more likely to split out the wood being right next to an edge. So right here, I'm just adding a brace between the wheels, making sure they would not hit as they turn just for extra reinforcement. Then I had a little nicer wood that I used for the outer trim. So even though I anchored those two one by twos, the full length of that plywood, it was still showing a little bit of a warp. So what I ended up doing is clamping that plywood to a table to hold it flat while I anchored the outer trim. I ended up using quite a bit of screws to do this so it would hold it nice and tight and I screwed and glued it from the inside so nothing would show on the finished product. Once I anchored both trim pieces on the sides like this, the platform showed no warpage after I was done. So when anchoring the side trim, I left about a quarter of an inch sticking up above the plywood so there was a little bit of a lip so the piece of furniture that she was setting on this platform would not slide off. So normally when I'm doing end pieces of trim, I would 45 the corners. However, I'm making that other side removable so she can lock the wheels. And I didn't want one side looking different than the other. So I went ahead and glued and screwed all this together. And then I also attached the end trim to the sides using my nail gun. So since I'm making this end piece of trim removable so you can access the locks on the wheels, I'm putting another cross member behind the wheels I should have done this before I put the outer trim on, but I forgot. So I'm gonna go ahead and taper a couple screws into each side and then put three in from the top. So I flipped the board over and then using a tape measure, I measured in from the edge to the cross member and then added three eighths of an inch so I would hit that cross member centered. Then countersunk the holes and put the screws in. So to make this side removable where the locking wheels are, I'm gonna go ahead and do some wooden dowels on each side. I put my end piece of trim in place and then made a mark where I was gonna drill the holes. So I've got a mark on the end piece of trim and the side piece of trim. Then using my square, I marked the center of each of the boards at 3 eighths of an inch, which is half of my 3 quarter inch trim. I think the next time I have to do dowels, I'm just gonna set that trim in place take the smallest drill bit I have and drill through it and that would give me a pilot hole for drilling the wood dowels because my dowels did not quite line up perfectly. Then I could have just put a little bit of wood filler on the outside of the one piece of trim. Then using a quarter inch drill bit I drilled halfway through the end pieces of trim, put the dowel in place, measured how much dowel was left over, then drilled that distance into the side trim. So that ended up working out okay and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. So being as though this end piece needed to be removable but I didn't want it possibly falling off on her when it's just sitting there. So I ended up mounting a magnet to help hold it in place 
So right here I'm just mounting the plate. And then I went ahead and put it in place on the dowels and anchored the other side of the magnet. And that way there was a little something extra to help hold it in place instead of just sitting on the dowels. I decided to put some glue on the dowels that were going in the side trim just so they would not come in and out freely. They would be held in there so she didn't have to worry about those popping out when she was removing the end piece of trim. Then all that was left to do was throw a nice sand to it. I didn't do any kind of a stain or finish on it because I didn't know what she was thinking as far as that goes. So I left that up to her. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on this thing so you can see how much weight it carries. Now I weigh 150 pounds and I'm just centered on this board. If there was weight equally distributed across the whole board, this thing would easily carry 300 pounds without a problem. So hopefully this video helped you out and it gave you some good information. If so, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.